Hey everyone, Michelle Lottie from Fairfax Cryobank. I'm the lab director and director of operations. And today I am filming an unboxing video. This is a new experience for me. So I hope that this works for you. So our topic is a home delivery of donor sperm for those of you interested in home delivery for a home insemination. So first thing I recommend is have everything ready. You'll need scissors to open the box or a box cutter. And I would recommend that when you receive ooh, said box, lovely labeled box from Fairfax Cryobank with your shipping tank in it, that you check it first, check all of your paperwork. You're gonna open it up, go through the paperwork, make sure everything's good. And then we're gonna leave it until you're ready to do your insemination. So let's see what we have. All right, so when you first open the box, there's going to be a little plug, just keeping everything safe and secure. You can just set that to the side. And then there's an envelope with all of your paperwork. You're going to see that the tank is in here. I'm just going to pull it out. You don't actually have to take it out of the box. You can leave it in here. But the tank is in there and it's closed with a zip tie. So for the paperwork, I would recommend you take everything out of the envelope and you're just going to go through and make sure everything matches, that your information matches and everything. We have tank handling instructions that tell you not to take the vials out of your tank until you're ready to use them. Very good advice. You don't want to expose them to warmer temperatures until you're ready to thaw the sample for your insemination. You want to re read all of the enclosed documents. When it is time to check the vials, I'm gonna go through how you should do that. Um, and it does let you know that the tank can hold temperature for seven to 14 days, depending on what you arranged with client services. And um, that is while it's closed. Once you open it, you're exposing the, the sample and the tank to room temperatures, and your um, temperature is gonna drop over time. And then just a note to send it back to us in the original shipping box with an enclosed label that will be in your envelope that you're just gonna slap right on the box when you're ready to ship it back after you've done your insemination. And then since you're gonna do the home insem, because this was shipped to your home, this instruction for identification, thawing and specimen quality standard, you can read through it, but there is a specific instruction for home insemination. And then we have all of the instructions for the shipper return. I would recommend you go through all of that. You don't necessarily have to do it right at the beginning. You can do it when you're ready to ship it back. So that's one packet and we're gonna set that aside. Okay, and then the second packet is our packing slip. And on here, on the ship to side, you wanna verify that it's your name and your address, everything's correct. And then you'll see under the product type, you're gonna see that I've, in this instance, ordered one ICI vial of donor 2854 from his specimen date 11509. So this information, and it's vial number two, this information is important because that's what you ordered and you're gonna verify that when you open your tank to make sure you got exactly what you ordered. If you go through the rest of the packing slip information is here, it tells you what everything means, it defines all of the different acronyms you're gonna see a summary of records. This is a document that's required to ship with all of the samples. It goes through all of the required testing that the FDA makes sure, <clears throat> excuse me, requires to make sure that your samples are safe for use. So we've got the summary of records, which is two pages. You'll also have a genetic disease testing sheet that will list all of the different tests that your donor will have had in the beginning of his screening and all of the results. And then of course there's a paper pregnancy report. Now you can use that um, if you do achieve pregnancy with the insemination, awesome. You can use this form, fill it in and send it out or you can just go online and do it on our website. Okay, so that's our second packet of paperwork. All right, it seems like a lot of paperwork because it is, but that's important and it's good because it covers all of the information that you need to ensure that you're getting what you ordered, that it's safe and it's ready to go. So the last and most important part is you get your, <clears throat> excuse me, your syringe, your needleless syringe that you're gonna use for your insemination. So I would put that to the side. 
and you have instructions for home insemination. And this will go through everything you need. We recommend that you have some sort of insulated gloves. I pulled some gardening gloves from home that you can use. Um, you could also just use a pair of winter gloves. Worst comes to worst, just use like a washcloth or something. The point of the gloves or the cloth is to ensure that you are not touching anything that is super cold. So keep in mind that we're talking about temperatures that are like 100, minus 150 degrees Celsius or colder in this tank. Liquid nitrogen is minus 196, but this is a vapor tank, so it might be a little warmer than that, but that's still going to cause a burn if you touch it inside. So you want to have some sort of protection for your fingers. And then, of course, um, I would recommend when you are going to open the tank, you want to have some paper towels or a washcloth or something, just because as the vial thaws, it's going to get condensation, and you want to be able to wipe that off. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I wear glasses all the time. If you don't, if you have some protective goggles or something, that's great. The reason we recommend that is because when you open the vial, you may have a little bit of aspirate that comes out just because of the pressure that was um, in the vial. If you don't have protective eyewear, that's okay. You can always just open it far away from your face. Um, and then you just wanna have a clean, organized space. I always recommend, especially when you're doing a home insemination, not only that it's clean and organized and that you have um, a steady table or a side table or something, um, bedside table, something like that. Um, also, you wanna be in an environment that's comfortable for you and that you can relax in because you want your body to be relaxed. And then it, what's inside, all of the stuff that I just told you, that's all that's in here. And then immediately you wanna review, as I said, that packing slip and all of the information to verify that in fact you did receive the donor vial that you had ordered, which is gonna be the case. Um, and then we can now, we can talk about, let's, uh, let's go ahead and imagine that we're gonna do the actual insem now. So in that case, you wanna have read all of your paperwork. I'm a big fan of reading everything through before you start, like a recipe, directions to you know, a test, anything like that, read everything before you get started. So you're gonna go through it and you will have read that what you wanna to do to thaw the vial is open the tank, remove, it, remove the vial, place it on the side table for 15 to 20 minutes. Once it's thawed, you can proceed with your insemination. So you, in order to move forward, you wanna have your needle of syringe here. We're not opening that yet. Um, some paper towels or a washcloth, the gloves, and then we wanna have scissors or, or something because um, the tank is zip tied closed. And that's for your safety and the safety of the sample. So we're gonna take the scissors and of course I zip tied it real tight. We're gonna, pop that open. Now, I hope you'll see this when we open it, but when I pull off the lid tank, you're going to see a puff of vapor. Um, you're safe, don't breathe it in. Liquid nitrogen vapor is not great to breathe in, it is very cold. Um, so just, you know, keep your face away from the tank. You're gonna open it up, you see that smoke on there? That's because it's the right temperature. Now you'll have already read the thaw instructions and what you're gonna do, I'm gonna see if I can move the camera in a little closer here. Let's see if my camera skills are any good here. What you're gonna do is there's a little tab that you're gonna pull up, see? Let's go down a little further, great. And right at the top, you'll see the cane here. Now this cane tab is gonna be labeled with either your last name or your initials. Um, and the donor number. So in this case, it's my initials, MO, and the donor number, 2854. Now don't worry, this is not actually a uh, donor sperm. We mocked up the vial. We're not gonna waste a saleable vial that may help one of you get pregnant. So I'm ready to thaw. I'm gonna pull the, the cane out. Now this aluminum cane is very cold and that's why it's good that I have these gloves on. And then I have my vial here, it's an ICI vial and I'm gonna pull it off the cane, and I'm just gonna place that cane right back into the tank. And then I'm gonna place this right on my side table, and I'm gonna view it, and it says, I'm gonna compare it to my packing, my packing slip. Donor 2854, specimen date 11509, vial number two, GIVFP, everything matches, oh, perfect. 
Now I'm gonna put it here on the table just to thaw for a little while. Okay, now while that's thawing, you can close your tank and we're gonna set it to the side. You're gonna get your space ready for your home insemination. I'm gonna take my gloves off so I can get everything ready. For the home insem, as you read through, you'll see we have some other instructions and tips that will help for a, hopefully a successful insemination. You wanna be um, able to lay flat, potentially to prop up your uh, hips with some pillows underneath, um, okay? And then you wanna have your needleless syringe. And I always like to have it prepped, so I would recommend opening it and then pulling it out. Keep Make sure your hands are clean and everything around you is clean. Don't touch the tip to any surfaces, but you just wanna break the seal so that it's a little bit easier to do the plunging action and then place it right back in the sterile container that it comes in. And we're gonna put that to the side. I mentioned about the condensation. Once the vial is thawed, you're gonna pick it up. At this point, it'll be room temperature, it'll be warmer. And just dry off the condensation and you'll see, this is not gonna be thawed because it hasn't been 15 to 20 minutes. But after 15 to 20 minutes, when you turn it up and down like this, you're gonna see that there's about a half a mil, there should be a half a mil of sample in here, which is a very small amount, but there are 10 million total modal cells, at least 10 million total modal cells in this little vial. And that's all you need for an insemination. So once it's thawed, you're gonna do that, you're gonna mix it and then make sure it's dried off. And I would actually recommend using the paper towel to open the sample and you'll see there's a little plastic gasket that formed a seal for you. Once you're ready to go, you're going to get yourself in position and you or your partner will use the syringe to pull up the sample, which I can't do because it's frozen, but we're gonna pretend. You'll pull up the half mil. And it doesn't really matter if you get a little bit of air in here. This isn't like a, an injection of um, medication or something like that where you don't want air bubbles. Um, but if you do, you can always do a, you know, a little tap and try and get it out. But once the sample's in there, what you'll do is you're just going to, either you or your partner will insert it into the vagina, deposit the sample, and I don't push hard. I would just push slowly to deposit the sample right onto the cervix, and then you're good to go. You're gonna lay there for, uh, you know, 30 minutes at least. We recommend in our paperwork that you lay for about two hours and you rotate. You lay on your back for 20, 30 minutes and then you rotate to the front. And what that does is it actually allows the sample to wash over the cervix and expose more sperm to that uh, to the opening in the cervix where they'll be able to swim in, swim up through the uterus into the fallopian tube and meet that egg. So that's the unboxing. That's what you're gonna do. And then to send it back, it's super easy. You're just gonna close everything up. If you have an extra zip tie in the envelope, you're gonna zip tie the, the tank. You are going to put your lid on, close it up, tape it up, slap on your FedEx label, just tape it onto the box, and you're either going to take it to a FedEx uh, location or you're gonna schedule a FedEx pickup. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you're interested in any other information or if you're interested in any other unboxing videos or <laughs> anything like that, please leave a comment for us or let us know. Um, hope this was helpful. Good luck.